If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. In order to find an expression for the magnitude of the electric field that allows the block to remain at rest, we're going to want to draw a free body diagram showing the forces that are acting on the block as it sits on the ramp. Now perhaps the most obvious force is the gravitational force which pulls on the block in the downward direction. So we can show that force in red here and we'll label it Fg. In addition we have the surface of the ramp pushing up on the block and it does so perpendicular to the ramp. So we could show that force also in red and that is known as the normal force. So we'll go ahead and label that Fn. And then finally since the block is not sliding down the ramp there has to be a force pushing on the block up the ramp to prevent it from sliding down and that force is going to turn out to be the electric force. We can label that as Fe. Now it turns out that it's going to be ad advantageous to take the gravitational force and break it into its x and y components. And so what we'll do is we'll draw a component in this direction and then we'll also have a component for gravity in this direction. That way we form a nice right triangle. And it turns out that this angle theta is the same as this angle theta right here. So this component of gravity would be adjacent to that angle and because it's adjacent we could use the cosine of theta to represent that component. So we would have Fg times the cosine of the angle. And then this component of the gravitational force is opposite from the angle. And because it's opposite the angle, we can use the sine of theta. So we would have Fg times the sine of theta. Now once we have the components, what we can do is actually redraw the forces but only show the components. So we would have the normal force acting in the y direction. We would have the electrical force acting in the x direction, and then we have the component of gravity that we've labeled Fg cosine theta, and then the component of gravity that's labeled Fg sine theta. Now these two forces, the Fg sine theta and the electrical force, are both acting in the x direction. And we know that the sum of the forces in the x direction is going to equal zero, since the block is not accelerating. And so we can take the electrical force which is pointing in the positive x direction and we could subtract the gravitational force that's acting in the x direction and set that equal to zero. Notice that we're subtracting that gravitational force because it is pointing in the negative x direction. Now we recall that the electrical force is equivalent to an electric field magnitude multiplied by a charge. So we'll make that substitution. And then since we're trying to find an expression for the magnitude of the electric field, we really want to solve this equation for E. So we're going to go ahead and add the Fg sine theta over to the right hand side. And then we'll divide by Q on both sides. So this will give us the electric field equaling the Fg sine theta divided by Q. Now the question wanted just the magnitude of the electric field. Magnitude means that we take the absolute value. So actually we'll take the absolute value of both sides of this equation. And since the gravitational force is always a positive value, we really only need to take the absolute value of the bottom portion of this equation. So this would be the final answer. It might be helpful to replace Fg with the expression Mg. We recall from previous chapters that Fg is equivalent to Mg. So we can make that substitution, and this would give us our final answer for the magnitude of the electric field. Now for part B of the question, we simply have to plug in the given mass, the given charge, and the angle, and that's going to allow us to find the magnitude of the electric field. We have to make sure we convert the grams into kilograms and the microcoulombs into coulombs. To convert grams to kilograms, of course, we multiply by 10 to the minus 3, and to convert microcoulombs to coulombs, we multiply by 10 to the minus 6. So we'll go ahead and plug in the known values. And when we crunch that down on our calculators, we get approximately 3,195. And then the standard unit of electric field will be newtons per coulomb. So this gives us the correct magnitude for the electric field. Now we also need the direction. Well, to get the direction, let's note again from the diagram that the electric force is pointing up the ramp. So we can redraw that. 
we have ourselves a negative charge and we know that for negative charges the electric force points in a direction that is opposite to the electric field. We'll say that again. For negative charges, the electric force points in a direction that's opposite to the electric field. So since the electric force is pointing up the ramp, the electric field must be pointing down the ramp. And so the direction we could state for the electric field is down the ramp. And that completes the answer to part B. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send your own question into the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.